Dr. Stallings is now answering your questions, and you can ask those questions by texting them to us, 336-379-5775. Already we have a few questions in the queue for you. The first one is, what is the best way I can help my parents handle or manage their mental health during the pandemic? They're doing what they need to, but it's really wearing them down. You know, that's a very thoughtful question. I really appreciate whoever wrote that in because that means that you have empathy. You're already thinking about their mental health and what they need. Our seniors in particular are used to the life after retirement. They're used to going to church. They might be used to being a part of their groups and they are being, because they're higher risk, isolated. It's important that although we're physically isolated, that we are not mentally isolated. So doing some fun games um, with your parents using technology such as the devices so you can FaceTime, send in a good old fashioned letter, write a letter that requires questions to be answered back. Um, you could even make them a mix, like a CD of their favorite music from a certain era. Um, it's important that we think about ways to say, I see you, I love you, and I value you. That's just right now we're focused so much on staying healthy and not dying from this disease but they are still people. And so we need to make sure that we are reaching out with compassion and preventing social isolation. Mm -hmm. Does placing a coffee filter behind a mask make it more effective or does it depend on the type of mask that the person is wearing? Well, I, I tend to tell patients to avoid knitted or crocheted masks because it's so porous. Like the little holes in the crochet and the little holes in the knit make it very easy for droplets to pass through. And so I usually say it depends on the kind of mask. You don't necessarily need um, any kind of additional filtration if you're using a surgical mask like this, or if you're wearing a mask with two layers of fabric. It typically is more important for people who are handling airways. So if you are someone who works in the hospital or if you're someone who works in the dentist's office, you need extra filtration. Regular people who are just living their everyday lives don't need those additional layers. All right, this person is saying that they heard a um, health professional say that echinacea might make them more susceptible to catching COVID-19. Do we know if there's any truth or information for that statement? Now, while I haven't heard anything to say, to speak against echinacea, what I would say is it's very important to boost your immune system. One of the key ways to boost your immune system is actually to get a good night's sleep. We really underscore and minimize how much sleep plays a role in our overall immune system. When you are tired, you run down your body, your immune system gets weaker, you're more susceptible. Also vitamin D is a known cofactor to help boost your immune system. But in general, I think of life as being on a continuum of balance. So I wouldn't rely on any one thing. What I would say is get your checkup, make sure that your health is doing well. And if you had to take something, I would recommend the vitamin D and I'd also recommend a good night's sleep. Mm -hmm. This person is asking what the difference in symptoms is between coronavirus and the flu. You know, I would say that there's not many differences. I think the differences probably lie with outcomes, not differences in symptoms. And so that's why it's especially important to take your seasonal flu vaccine. If you're over 65, there is a high dose flu vaccine for you. Um, patients tend to have the same kinds of symptoms where they get the body aches, they might get fevers or chills. Some people may not have any symptoms. I think one of the scariest things about the coronavirus is that so many people who have it tend to not have symptoms. Whereas the flu, we tend to have something, body aches, fatigue, but with COVID, many people don't even know they have it. Yeah, this person is asking a follow-up question to that. What happens or what should I do if I get coronavirus, but I don't have symptoms? And so many times, we go right back to the key thing we keep saying, because you don't know, please wear a mask. Because by the time many of us show symptoms, we've probably already had it for 10 days. It's so important that you protect the people around you because many of us who have this don't know. And it's not our intention to hurt the ones we love or the people who are innocent who come in contact with us, but it can happen to anyone. Anyone who has this virus can make others sick. But if you don't know, then you're already doing a lot of damage to innocent people. And this person, just to follow up with that, if they do have coronavirus, but they don't have symptoms, what should they be doing? Should they be staying at home? Should they, and for how long? So there are some guidelines that um, are used by, this, you know, the CDC has issued guidelines. Here we are using those same guidelines to make that determination. It depends on what kind of 
environment you're in. So let's say that you are at home and you have an immunocompromised relative who lives with you, then you will probably need to be quarantined somewhere else. So that's why I think it's important who else is in the household. I've had patients who have had to say, you might need to be quarantined somewhere else because your wife has cancer. So it depends on who else lives in the home, but anyone who's positive needs to be at least wearing their mask and isolated from the public for, I think our guidelines are 10 days. And many times what we'll do is if someone works in a high risk area, for instance, you work in the NICU with babies or you're working in a nursing home, we may want to check another test to make sure you have cleared before you return to work. Mm -hmm. All right, we're continuing to answer your questions. You can text them. You see the number right there at the bottom of your screen. That's 336-379-5775. Dr. Stallings joins us again in just a few more moments.